Welcome back. We are talking all about something that everyone wants to know is healers, psychic mediums, business owners. How do you create more time and more clients? And when you hear this episode, I want you to really think outside the box because each thing that we share, you have to put your own spin on it. And we've been talking a lot about that with our students, our business students, and the importance of having your own authentic energy onto everything that you do with your business. And that's just being yourself and putting yourself out there as you, not what looks good, you know, not, not what, um, sounds good. It's what feels right for you. Right? Yeah, exactly. And when you have a business, it's important to maximize your time. We only got 24 hours every single day. So there's many aspects of a business that you have to put time and energy into. So yeah. this episode is going to help people have clarity on where to put their time and energy because that's a big clue. There's always going to be that small amount of action steps that create most of the results, which we'll get into later in this episode. Right. And I think the big problem when we started working on our mission, we we're like, how much time should we be putting in? Yeah, because as an entrepreneur, you're confused you go from having a boss, like with us working in the school system, you know, we had our principals and we had the lesson plans and the team meetings and the school day, the length of the time. So when you go into your business, you're trying to figure out what is enough and what is too much. And I think that's a big thing that people, they don't know where to go. It is huge because I can remember, as you said that, just feeling like not enough, no matter how long I worked at the beginning. Yeah, and like you think you're spinning your wheels like, mm, is this going anywhere when I'm doing it too? Yeah, and it, it looking back is because I wasn't clear. I wasn't clear on the what. I wasn't clear on the why. I wasn't clear on specific, like we said, the specific action steps that move the needle the most. Yeah. Because we're trying to do all these different action steps. We could work eight, nine, ten hours and move nowhere. And I've done that before. You've done that before. And it that's why it feels so tense and so tight and, and frustrating out, and frustrating, draining draining and you're thinking i remember thinking at a certain point like damn how can i sustain this energy like this is not sustainable and i knew something was off yeah like, i knew there was something that it shouldn't be this way because our mentors would teach us they would tell us like no you need to be energized mm -hmm. like your business system should energize you of course there's times where you're going to be tired just like at a job just like when we were teaching but this should be sustainable. You and should fulfilling. be energized and fulfilling. It should be a business that aligns with your personality and your needs and your clients, your ideal clients' personality and needs. And when you align the values, all right. of a sudden you have all this energy to do the thing. And that's what we figured out over time after we went through all these frustrations on how to figure out how to align our values, our personality needs, and our ideal clients' personality and needs and values, and create services and marketing and sales systems that all align with that. So that way, whenever we're doing our day-to-day -day schedule, our week-to-week -week schedule, our yearly schedule, it's very clear mm -hmm. and it's energizing. And we, we actually get momentum when we do it. Right. And that's what's happening with the business students that have gone through the pro the 90 day business students. I, I would say we work very closely with those people, the people that are actually taking the steps and really aligning with their values and putting that out there. Their business changed changes at a rapid rate. It I remember one student that we worked with and she was like, I don't get it. Like I'm doing all of these things. I've been doing readings for 10 years and my schedule's not filled. Like, I don't know what's happening. And we tweak something in her, her system. It was a very small, minor move. She had her schedule wide open, I think eight hours out of the day for people to choose what their session is with her. She thought she was doing her clients a favor and she was afraid to commit to her schedule. Once she let go of that fear and we had a conversation around this, she tweaked it and she opened up certain amount of spots that felt right for her and also ended up benefiting her clients because they didn't have so many choices. So I think that there's certain things that we do in the business where we think, oh, we're helping our clients by squeezing them in or we're helping our clients by keeping our calendar wide open. That's not helping anyone. Like as, as healers and coaches, when we're doing these things, we're draining our energy too because we don't know when we're on. 
when we have to be on. Yeah, and it all, we realize too, and you would agree, uh, because we talked about this before, that it all comes from a place of love. It all comes from a place that yeah. they really want to serve. Oh, definitely. And before their business, that's what they were doing, right? People, I did it too, right? People in front of you, and you're like, I got this information. Do they want to hear it? And I'd be excited to like share information or to like give a reading or mm-hmm. to do that kind of thing. So you kind of sometimes take that same mindset into your business and it doesn't work. Right. That mindset doesn't work in business. And it's it not sustainable. You have to, that's why they call it like the business mindset. Like you have to create a new mindset, a new way of seeing your world. And that's the 80%. We've realized that yeah. most of the things holding people back, like even with that situation you were, you were just talking about, it's the mind. It's yeah. how the people are seeing their world. That person was seeing the world in a way where I got to keep all my hours open so that way I can I want to I'm helping people. and I did I the same them. thing you did the same thing and this is the common pattern we've noticed yeah and that's the beautiful thing is is like once you work with a group of people that are like-minded you start to notice patterns like the seasons and whenever you start to notice patterns now patterns are pathways to power mm-hmm. now you have a chance to really utilize that pattern and to really leverage it. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about leveraging these patterns that naturally show up in your life as a medium, as a healer, as a coach, and leveraging them in your business, in your life. Right. And just listening to this part of the story might remind you of something that you've done in the past or you're doing right now or you're thinking of going into your mission and and doing your business. So think of that as a clue that, you know, maybe... There's certain things that are implemented in your business that just it's not working for you anymore or it hasn't worked for you. Don't be afraid to tweak the things that aren't working. I think that's the big thing is, is as psychic mediums and healers, we can intuitively tune in and give readings to everyone else. But when it comes to your own stuff, it's hard for you to get the intuitive nudge and then take the action. And it's the practice. It really is the practice of being okay with change in business. That's why each year that we're in business, we're growing at a rapid rate. And the people that we're working with, it's happening too. But like you said, the business mindset is everything. Because we can give a list of steps to our uh, business students, our masterminders, and give the same steps to everyone. And some people will work for it and other people it won't. And there's two reasons for that. One is because it's not authentic to them and it's not in alignment at all. So it wouldn't work for them. And everyone has a different way of doing things. But the other thing, the second thing is if they're not really truly ready and they're not believing in it, but they're just doing the steps and feel like this isn't going to work. That can take over. That energy can take over too. Yeah, it can. And that's why in our 90 day business mastermind, we have people that move past the mind, move past their old ways of seeing the world. And their personal life will transform. All of a sudden, they have a better relationship with their spouse or their kids or the people around them, their clients. Or we've had people that leave corporate world full time and they go full time in their mediumship business and everywhere in between. Right. We've seen most of this happen because of the people being willing to look at how they're seeing their world and realizing that how they are seeing their world mm-hmm. is the number one thing that's constraining their business because all of these skills and tactics, there's a million of them. There's a oh, million, yeah. a billion ways to get, to get a result. It's really getting the right mindset, getting mm-hmm. clear, figuring out what's holding you back. And then also figuring out what those skills, like you were saying, which ones align with you, what strategies align with right. your personality because they're not all going to align with your personality, which gets me to the next point, zone of genius. Mm -hmm. When you align with your zone of genius, the one to three things in your business that creates impact on your clients and money in the account, what are those for you? When you do these one to three things over and over on a weekly basis, on a yearly basis, five years, they Mm -hmm. compound because they're so powerful that when you do them, it creates all of this energy, all of this impact. And what creates money and business is energy impact. And one thing that goes with that, I'm thinking when you were just talking, I'm thinking of Mavis, my mentor Mavis, and she talked about readings, reading, private readings, one-on-one readings are the bread and butter to your business. She always said that. 
she did group events, of course, but she also did private readings. And she told us that at the very beginning of the mentorship. And I truly believe that. I feel as a medium, there's some mediums where they don't do any one-on-one readings. They just do groups. And that's fine. But what I've recognized, readings, if you're a medium, doing those sessions with people, really working deeply with them, for me, that's there's so much power in that. You can really get insights in the way that they're thinking. You can get insights from the spirit realm. And then from that piece, that zone of genius, whether it's group readings or private readings, it actually builds on some content that you can create online from your own experiences. You're not replicating other people's experiences and seeing, oh, that looks good on Instagram, so I'm going to do that too. That's going to work. It's like, no, you actually have these experiences because you've done the coaching or you've done the mediumship and the healing. And people can feel it when you talk. And you're vibrating out that energy that, that you've done it. Yesterday, I was on a call with a client and she's crushing it. And this is someone that she knows her zone of genius. That's why she's crushing it. Mm -hmm. I love doing readings. This is what I do right now. She knows she has a vision of doing more in the future. You know, she could see herself doing all these things that a lot of us can. Speaking on stages, writing books, courses, right? Everything that could be in this industry. But she has lasered in over these last several years on her zone of genius. I'm doing platform readings I'm doing group readings I'm doing one-on-one readings and that's what I do and she figured out a way to either hire out the other parts of her business or figure that out how to get mm-hmm. that solved and she spends most of her time in her zone of genius giving either one-on-one readings or on group readings or platform readings and crushing it in business because of it because you need it to be simple yes if things aren't simple you're going to get overwhelmed you're not going to take action so when you go and you give your reading or if you're a healer or a coach and you do your coaching session, you know, how does that feel inside? You feel all this energy. You feel a shift. Even if you're the one doing the coaching or the reading, there's a shift going in place. There's a ripple out into the world. Mm-hmm. You're doing that over and over. We have so many clients. There's many clients that are on their path and we have other clients that aren't on their path. Maybe they weren't in the past to where they're like, I want to ask them their vision. I want to. Um, give readings. I want to have a full schedule. Okay. So how many readings have you given in the last three months? And it's crickets. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, six months ago I did like 30 and then, and two years ago I did. And it's like gas on break, gas on break, gas on break. And it's like, it's so simple, but it's like stay in your zone of genius. If you're going to give readings, if you're going to do coaching, if you're going to do healing, make sure you're doing that consistently weekly on a monthly basis. And some people will say, well, where do I get my people from? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Figure it out. Yeah. Have the internal commitment inside. Yeah, it, it, it can be challenging at times. It can Get be into a mentorship. Get, Get into, into a, a mentorship circle. program. Get around a community. There's people everywhere. We realize that the people that have this internal commitment to this, we're like, no, fuck it. I don't need to think about where I'm getting the people. I'm internally committed to doing my readings for the next year. Um, and if I don't have a reading during that time, I'll just meditate myself and I'll connect them with someone. But my intention, I'm going to have those spots filled up. Those are the people that fill them up. The people that are it's, saying like, well, what do I get my people? And they stay stuck on that story. They don't find their people and because I, they're always saying, where are my people? And I think true. And I think it's the big thing is when you have that internal desire, it vibrates out. Hmm. So you're pulling these things pulling in. in. And you're waking up your clients. I think that's what I recognize too, like with this work, like, I know for both of us, we have a huge reason why we don't need to advertise what our reason is every single day, but it's internally in us and it's vibrating out into the world. So what I've noticed with the people that we work with, the people that are really have that internal reason why and they've taken the time to get clarity on the feeling of why am I even doing this work? Is this because I want to be seen on stage or is there another layer underneath that there's this internal drive because I went through something and I experienced this or I know that I want to impact people because there's so much more to life than what we could see with the human eye. So I think if, if you really get clear on that, you won't have the excuses of, I can't find people to practice with. I can't find clients. It's like, no, I will figure out a way like you shared 
but it's going to be that internal drive and that internal confidence that no matter what, I'm making it happen because I have a desire that's so strong that it doesn't matter what looks what it looks like externally, even though I can't see people to to practice with right now, I know that they're there. But if they're not really sure on why they're doing it, and it's for a surface level reason, like I want to be on stage, or I, yes, that's great. Like, that's going to happen no matter what, if you keep on doing your work. But if that's not the underlining reason, then it there's changes. No to it. There's no energy Exactly. To it. So it's not that there's anything wrong with thinking that you're going to be on stage. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if that's the only reason why you're doing mediumship, because you yeah. saw another medium getting some sort of significance and scene and, you know, it felt special to see them shine. There's a reason that they're shining and it's not because of that. It's because they have this internal drive inside and we can't forget that. I think going through the process of going through practice, it's easy to forget why am I even doing this if you're not staying focused and reading your vision or or journaling about your why on a regular basis? We do that regularly. We talk about it regularly. Yeah. Because we have to. Because we understand that it. we all have an internal drive. It's there. Mm-hmm. We're just accessing it. It's like if you're digging for gold. If you're not digging, you're never going to get the gold. If you're not journaling, if you're not talking about your why, if you're not make, painting pictures about it, being clear... Right. You're not going to bring that energy up. It's in you. You just have to activate it. Mm-hmm. And some people think, oh, I, I did that exercise five years ago. It's like, it's not going to work. Or I took a class five years ago, like last month. Even if you took one last month, it's like, this is a daily thing. Like, if you're going to do this kind of work, you it needs to be an internal drive. It needs to be a commitment. This isn't like you're doing just a basic job that's out there. This is like... People that are in this industry are passionate or like driven. Like you said, they lost loved ones or they've went through um, seeing people and their family depressed or maybe suicide or like just something where it's like there's an energy there that gives them hunger to want to help people. And as you access that, like you said, now you have all this energy to do everything that you need to do for your business. And as you stay in your zone of genius, like giving readings, coaching, um, s- creating, right? For many of them, it's creating. It's That's one of my zone of geniuses. I'm a mm-hmm. creator. I love creating. And it, it just pours through me. I could create uh, content. I could create lesson plans. I create when I'm one-on-one with people because we're creating energy. It's an artist. So coaching, yeah. creating, um, it could be one of your zone of geniuses is maybe speaking on stage. There mm-hmm. are people out there where it's like, that's your zone of genius. I'm going to go. And I'm going to speak on stage, and that's how I build my business. That's how I create my impact. The point is, is you have to figure out right now, in this moment, like right now, what is your zone of genius? We're all intuitive. We could see 20 yeah. years on the line. I'm not talking about where you're going to be 20 years from now. That's important to know. Right now, what are you doing to move, move the needle? Because you're not going to get to that 20-year vision if you're not building your foundation right. out. Like you said, your content, your value comes from being in the field. Being with people, us being with people this last decade has revealed to me all of these few patterns that we all have that are spiritual entrepreneurs. It's helped heal me. It's mm-hmm. helped me to leverage the pa- those patterns, and it's helped me to help other people. If you're not in the field, you're not going to see that clearly. It's like the people in Alaska that could see so many layers of snow. There's like, I don't know how many there are. There's like maybe 20 different types of snow, 30. Mm-hmm. And then people that are in Florida where we live, they wouldn't know anything about that. It's because when you're in the field, when you're in the elements, you start to recognize these patterns and in whatever industry or element you're in, now you have value. You can't just stay at home reading books or attending seminars and thinking that you know shit because it's in your head. If you don't have results with it, you don't know it. If you're applying it into your life and you're getting results and you're putting it into your body, you know it now. Mm-hmm. So that's a good good uh, temperature gauge there to think about some of the things that we're talking about you might have heard before, but the better question to ask is, am I applying this into my life and getting results with it? If you're not... That's the trick, the results. The trick. Are you getting the results? Look in the bank account. Look at your body. Look at your relationships. Like, look, like, measure it and see if you're getting results. And be results honest and about own it. own it. It's okay. We have many things that... We've read about millions of times that we still don't understand because we haven't got results in it yet. But we have many things that we do understand now because we get this process and we continuously extract it. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that you're finished with that key, right? Because I was thinking of something um, about the importance of when we are working with people, our ideal customer, if you're a psychic medium and healer or coach, your ideal customer might be someone that's a, a certain type of person. They're into the physical body. They're into um, nourishing themselves and moving their body and, and feeling good and glowing from the inside out. And then another psychic medium and healer might be like, I'm focused strictly on just the mediumship practice. Nothing to do with the physical body. Nothing to do with the energy. It's all about the mediumship practice, and that's the focus. Is there a right or wrong way? No, but it's important to figure out what is it that you want and where do you want to go. And I think that's the big thing to know that everyone has an, a, a different ideal customer. So when you're creating, create from the space that you feel you are as a psychic medium healer and coach, and you'll attract very similar people to you. You also will repel the opposite. And I think at the very beginning stages of people in business, they get sort of insecure or frustrated. Like, why are these people not gravitating to me? Well, because they're not aligned with your energy and who you are. Everybody's not freaking like you. <laughs> Yeah, I know. No, I'm kidding. That's a, that's a hard I've thing. Gotta, I've got to tell myself that too. Yeah. I, I joke about it because I did the same thing. I know. So it's like, so you have to understand the more that you're showing up as you, the more people that you're going to repel and the more fine tuned your ideal customer is going to be. And it's going to gravitate to you at a very fast rate. And I think that's important to know that it's about not taking things personal if someone is choosing something else over your program. And I think people don't understand that. Something that I've had to get in my mind is it's important to know everything that I create is connected to me and put it out there. And the people that are gravitated to it, there's a reason. And I remember at the very beginning, I was trying to serve everyone. I'm like, I want to serve everyone. I want everybody to like me. I wanted everyone to like me. I wanted everyone to be served. I wanted. I didn't want to limit the people that could come in. And once I stopped that kind of behavior and wanted to serve everyone and just did my thing, that's when everything started pouring in and r me being very clear on who I wanted to help. And when you are in front of your ideal client, it's a different feeling. Oh, yeah, definitely. The temperature gauge would be... It Our ideal easy. clients energize us. The ones that aren't ideal, they're not as energizing. It's more of like a drainer. Yeah. Like so with the people that we like to work with, they want to be helped. They want yeah. to be told. They're coachable. They're ready. It flows. It's just like when you're given it's, a reading or anything. Like you need the other side to be open. You all know when you have your ideal client in front of you because it flows in a different way. Yeah. And that's what you want. And and what does this have to do with the topic? has everything because if you stay in your zone of genius and you have your ideal client you could see how you're focusing on the 20 percent of actions of things you need to do that create 80 percent of the results and when you do that you save so much time and energy there's no longer where you are working yeah. 10 hours and only getting like one hour of work done it's like no you're very effective and efficient with what you're doing mm -hmm. and it energizes you when you're doing it because you're with your ideal client right and then there's systems which we can go in. We're actually going to go into some of this in our webinar coming up yes. tomorrow night. And the next couple of podcast episodes. And yeah. It is. The, the, the business system is another part of it, right? Right. Which we give. We, help, we have a little system that we help people with and we tailor it to their unique personality and needs, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing that you can do. Yeah. Because you have a system, but then you got to tailor it towards your unique personality and needs. And whenever you do that... You'll, you won't be asking for energy anymore. You'll have all this energy inside of you. Yeah, maybe some days are lower than others, but right. there's going to be a consistent energy flow when you're locked into this process. How do we know? Because we're experiencing it. We watch clients experience it over and over. Like Lindsay said, they come into our 90-day mastermind, and then they're doing all these action steps, their schedule's wide open, all of this, and then we just tighten things up, and now they have all this extra energy to enjoy their family to enjoy their kids to travel and be more impactful in their 
business too. Be mindful of the choices that are coming Which through. Which is exciting because yeah. the whole mission is to go out and connect people to past loved ones, connect people to the intangible, connect people to their own selves. And that's what we're doing whenever we get efficient and effective with how we're operating our business. We can do this in a way more impactful way. And integrating your personal life and having fun with life and not just feeling like I'm with clients and I'm teaching them how to live their life, but I'm not. And I think that's the, the bridge that when we're working with people, that's the biggest thing is to enjoy your life and do fulfilling things in your work with your clients, having the most energy for your clients and for yourself. And then also have that in your own life and enjoy, enjoy whatever it may be for you. It could be travel. It could be, um, reading a book under a tree, whatever it may be, going to outdoor markets. Like there's so many things that we can enjoy in life and why not mix the two, the mission with that? Yeah. And, it, and we're not saying all this because we want you to live this abundant life or be a unicorn or to, to do all these things. This is so you're around in five years. We've seen so many people burn out Yeah, because they're not doing everything that you just said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're drained. And if you go and you have fun and your excitement and your ideal client and your zone of genius, you'll be around five years from now and you'll be even more impactful. The majority, the law of averages in every industry, not just the spiritual Mm -hmm. industry, most people will either be the same or worse. And there'll be a few people that are sustainable that keep rising. It's just the the laws of nature. So what are you going to decide? Which one are you going to be? Are you going to be the person that's going to be around and be, you know, five years from now and be more impactful, more skillful with what you're doing, enjoying your life even more? Are you going to be the the person that's saying, oh, I already know this because I read about it in a book. So, yeah, you know, da, 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 da. And you might have to, you know, work three jobs and be drained and not be good for your clients. You don't want that either. We you see know? It all the time, too. Um, so I want to fill you in on something. A lot of you have already signed up for this webinar that we have free webinar to tomorrow. No, tonight. tonight. Oh my God. I keep saying tomorrow tonight, which is Thursday at 7 PM Eastern standard time. We are going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be informative. We start at seven Eastern standard time. We're on zoom. Definitely sign up. We'll put the link below. So you have that. And we are so excited. If you're someone that's in business, has a powerful mission, whether you are already receiving payment from clients or you're someone that's thinking about it, definitely without a doubt, join us. You won't want to miss this. But only sign up if you want to create energy and momentum in your business. Yes. Yes. Okay, guys. Well, we will see most of you tonight.